Hey, in this video we're going to save and load a score. So we're going to keep track of how many times I shoot uh, shoot this red ball. And even if we turn off the game and turn it back on, it'll still remember. We're going to do this with Unity's player pref system. So the thing you need to know about computer memory here is there's kind of RAM or temporary memory and then solid state or permanent memory. So if I'm playing this game right now, walking around, right, the game, the computer remembers where I am, it remembers a few things like that, but if I turn off the game, it's now forgotten all that information, where I was, which way I was looking. In the same way that if you were writing a document, you're writing all this stuff here, but I haven't saved it yet, so if my power, the electricity goes out, I'm going to lose what I've written because I haven't saved it yet. I'd have to save. So first let's make a counter to count how many times I shoot that red ball. Right click, create C sharp script, call it red counter and open that up. So we're going to make a new integer. We're going to call it counter and an update. So lots of times every second, we're going to check if we are so I'm left clicking to whoops, get mouse, yeah, get mouse button down. So a left click, it's going to check if I just left clicked. If so, counter is going to go up by one. And then we're just actually going to show that value in the console so we can see what's happening. And now I'll just attach this script by clicking and dragging to the right here, put, putting it on the player. And we'll look at console down here just to see what's going on. So now we can click and that counter is going up each time and it tells me where you, we are. But if I turn off the game and turn it back on, we start back at zero. So we want to actually remember how many we've shot. So instead of counter starting at zero, when we start, we're actually going to set counter. And we're going to say uh, red count. And what this is going to do, when it starts, it's going to get an integer according to this key. I could make up any key I want. And then over here, we actually need to not just increment counter, but we need to set that. So we need to save it each time. Set int to the exact same key. And now when I save it, well, there seems to be an error. Oh, yes, okay, so set int, I told it the key, but I need to also do comma counter to give it the number that I want it to set it to. And it'll give you a little tip here, string key and then int value. So you've got to give it two arguments. We save that and try it out. So now I'm shooting and it remembers and I turn off the game, I can even shut down my computer or whatever, and play the game later, and now it's going to remember that number. Something you might want to do, because I had to type this exactly, right, these two, and if you ever repeat yourself on a computer, you're probably not writing the best code, because what if I accidentally missed a letter here, you know? It might not be so obvious that there's a problem, so what you could do instead is set a string, call it key, I guess. We could put this right here and now just say key. And maybe I'll use this a third time or a fourth time and every time I can just say key. So that's a little more reliable. Now what this actually is doing is it's creating a file on your computer. And if you do location of player prefs unity, you can find some information about where to find this file. For me, it's here. And this is what that file looks like. And you can kind of see, right, it's as simple as that. So this is say, writing a file to your computer, and that's why it's permanent. One last thing. The very first time I ran this script, key didn't exist because I'm loading a file that or a value that didn't exist before I've set anything. 
So one thing, and it assumes here that it's going to be zero. If it can't find it, it's zero. But you can actually do this, let's say five, and this would default to five. If it can't find it, it would be a default. So that's how you save an integer. You can save a boolean, like a true or false, or a string, and you can actually save an entire class as well, or a whole bunch of values. And that'll be, I guess, uh, in the next video. So thanks for watching.